This is Colin O'Keefe for LXPN TV. The heart bleed bug dominating news as of late is as bad and pervasive a vulnerability as we've seen in recent years, and it's leaving companies scrambling to react and open to potential liability. Joining me now from Boston to discuss both of these issues is Cynthia LaRose. She is chair of Mince Levin's Privacy and Security Practice and author on the firm's blog, Privacy and Security Matters. Cynthia, let's talk first about that potential liability through really no fault of their own, or mostly many companies have left themselves open to a major vulnerability. So in taking a look at that, just how much liability could they potentially face? Yeah, that's a really good question, Colin. And at this point, we don't, we're not really sure. I think the, I think the potential liability isn't going to relate to what's happened over the last two years, because there's really very little way to know at this point. We know what the bug does and what it's capable of doing, but we don't really know what it did um, because this bug is so pernicious that it didn't really, uh, you know, there, there were no footprints left, no breadcrumbs left behind. So we don't really know um, what data had left the building, is it as it were. I think the, the potential for liability will be for the folks who don't pay attention to this, um, that don't patch their systems, that don't look up and down the technology stack, not just the servers, but look up and down the stack to see what other um, what other software they're using, what other uh, hardware they're using. Um, you know, Cisco and Juniper put out a big list of potential vulnerabilities. So it it pays to sit up and take notice of those sorts of things when large providers. Um, of routers are, are saying, eh, you know, we've got some vulnerabilities here, people, you need to make patches. Patches are out there, you need to apply them. I think that's when we'll see some potential liability. If something comes up, if there's a breach that occurs and it can be traced back to this bug, then then I think it's going to be time for people to, to sit up and take notice. Um, just to relate back to something that's happened that happened just before heart bleed, so it kind of got lost in the shuffle, I think. The FTC two weeks ago um, issued settlement orders in the Fandango and Credit Karma um, matters. Both of those, um, the FTC alleged in their complaints that the companies uh, misled consumers in their privacy policies because they said that they were using SSL to protect the consumer's information, the user's information, when in fact they either hadn't implemented it at all or it was implemented incorrectly. So, you know, that's that's getting back to the whole security, what you're telling people, how you've been telling them, what you say, and make sure that what you say and what you do going forward at least are consistent. Absolutely. And that's a, a nice segue there as I'm curious, what's been your advice to companies when it comes to responding to this? Obviously, uh, changing user passwords has been one of the first steps that I've seen around there. But but what else should companies be doing uh, in response to this heart bleed bug? Well, they should make sure, companies should make sure that they advise users to change their passwords once they've patched or if they've found that, they not, that they're not vulnerable, that their systems were never vulnerable. Um, it's a good message to give your your end users uh, and your customers if you particularly if you have a site that has a portal for your customers to log in um, that site that portal area should be checked because people are using username and law and password they may be uploading sensitive information via a portal so you want to make sure that that's checked and if it's fine and has been fine you know that's a that's a good place to message customers um, but you want to make sure that you, that no one's telling anyone to change a password until you've verified that the heart bleed is not an issue for your site. Um, because all that's doing is people are changing passwords and are giving that password right back over um, via a, a vulnerable, uh, you know, a vulnerable server. So that's the first thing. The second thing is make sure your messaging is consistent. Um, I've been working with clients in the last week that are, you know, have a wide range of products, widely distributed um, companies with different divisions and different operating uh, operating business units, and everyone is scrambling to try and do some sort of messaging. Um, we've tried to uh, advise clients to, you know, get get a ring around it, uh, make sure the company as a whole has 
um, consistent messaging, that it's all been reviewed by technical so that it's completely accurate from a technical pr perspective. It gives customers the information that they need if they have to apply a patch, if they have to go someplace and get something to do it, that they understand what they're doing, and make sure you talk to legal. Um, it shouldn't be just the tech guys talking amongst themselves, deciding what they're going to put up on an event response page. Um, there needs to be legal involvement here too, because if you don't do it right, that could be exhibit A in a plaintiff's class action suit. Definitely, definitely. We've, we've seen a lot of initial reaction and uproar in response to this, but of course it's going to be some time before we get a sense for its full impact, especially uh, in the legal world. Uh, once again, that was Cynthia LaRose of Mintz Levin. For more of her insight on this and other data security and privacy issues, be sure to visit privacyandsecuritymatters.com. Thank you for joining me today, Cynthia. Thanks, Colin.